Hello everyone, this is Lucian Balsam saying hi from Dures, Albania. Behind me is the Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea, meet my subscribers, my subscribers meet the Adriatic Sea. <laughs> right, so um, I'm on, the, on a complex that used to be... Um, well, it used to technically belong to the people, but in reality belonged to the elite of the Communist Party. This is where all the bosses of the Communist Party, they would come here. Also, they would hold many of their international meetings here. Uh, and after the fall of communism, it became a bourgeois complex for bourgeois people to come here and uh, serve bourgeois coffee. And basically do... Uh, and basically for capitalist oppressive pigs like me to come here and make bourgeois videos uh, for hopefully bourgeois public. So, this is a longer version of the update that I have published on the Romanian language channel. Now that one I've published from uh, Škodra. Sadly I didn't have enough time to stay in Škodra to videotape more um, more of the updates and whatnot, but then again, um, the schedule there was slightly tighter than it is here. So, uh, basically this is a video with a certain um, off-the-cuff impressions. I have no script, uh, even if I had, I, there was no way to uh, read it here. So, um, first of all, I would have to remark that uh, some of the pricing on services and products in this country uh, really make no sense to me. I mean, the gas, for instance, fuel for cars, is more expensive than it is in Romania, yet intercity transportation is cheaper than probably anywhere in Europe. I mean, it cost me to get from Tirana to here, it cost well, well, a bit over one euro, one dollar and a half, something like that, 150 leke. Uh, one dollar is 105 leke, so one dollar and a half, something like that. Uh, that's quite unusual, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, this country and especially a significant chunk of the younger population is demoralized. And when I say demoralized, I don't mean that in, in the sense that they're pessimistic or they don't have, um, uh, they, they lack optimism or they lack um, uh, enjoyment in life and whatnot. No, no, no. When I say demoralized, I mean it in the KGB sense, in the Yuri Bezmienov type of uh, demoralization, in the sense that they simply no longer have uh, any, I don't want to say hope, but they, 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 don't, they don't see anything good about their country. And that's kind of sad. And not only it's sad, but it's infuriating, at least to me, because uh, you know me, I have no qualms in calling out the bullshit in any country, and there is some bullshit here too. But when I, sp when I speak with some of the young people here, uh, it, it's infuriating because they see this country as much worse than it actually is. And they also tend to have a significantly better impression about other countries than those countries actually are. Uh, thankfully, they're also open to dialogue. So, for instance, I red-pilled uh, seven young people in a, uh, at once within, this, within a span of 30 minutes simply by uh, taking them to a Wikipedia page listing all the grenade attacks in uh, Malmö because they kept on telling, oh, Sweden is the best country in Europe and I'm like, yeah, no, not really. And you know, I just asked them, how many terrorist strikes took place in Albania? Oh, that's right, zero. How many grenade attacks took place in Albania since the end of the war? Uh, that's right, zero. And even during the war, they still had fewer <laughs> than Sweden in allegedly peacetime has uh, in the current year. So, um, you know, I took them to the Wikipedia page and um, they started looking at it. Hold on a second. Why, do, why, why, didn't we, why didn't we see this in our media? And I'm like, well, because your media sucks. Well, everyone's media sucks. That's why, we, that's why some people uh, head towards alternative media. Anyway. Yeah, another thing. Uh, when I'll get back to Romania, which will happen maybe two weeks from now or something like that, I, 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 I told you this will be a very long tour. It includes another country. I'll let you know about that uh, when, uh, when the time will be right and proper. Uh, but when I'll get back to Romania, I'll, I'll be spending basically more than two weeks editing <coughs> every single day because I've gathered a lot of footage in uh, in ten days here in Albania. 
and one of the most important piece of footage that I have gathered is a small interview with the survivor of uh, one of Enver Hoxha's gulags. I mean, the guy w went to jail at the age of 14 under the accusation of agitation and propaganda. And no, I'm not joking. That was the official, um, the official crime in the communist era penal code. And then after the after he served seven years in jail, for, so from the age of 14 to 21, then another 10 years of hard labor, uh, because that's what communists, uh, that's how communists used to treat children, which was slightly better than they would treat adults, which they would just shot them in the head uh, for, a, uh, for horrendous crimes like sending a letter abroad. Um, so yeah, uh, the good news, I guess uh, what I would say is that Unlike 2010, my most recent information uh, from the ground, from this country, date, that dated back from 2010, a lot of things have changed to the better since 2010. And one of the important things that has changed to the be for the better uh, since 2010 is that uh, the process of, um, of, memory, uh, of promoting the memory of the communist regime and insisting that people do not forget the horrors that this country has been through under the dictatorship of Enver Hoxha, the, all of those efforts are significantly superior today than, the, than what they used to be. And that, I guess it's to the credit of the very few people that do care, that uh, c command one of the institutions here that are tasked with this. Sadly, I, I just seem to, to, to never find them at work, so probably they spend most of their uh, work days on the field in all of the old prisons and whatnot. I kept on trying to find them, and I still have two more work, work days to spend in Tirana, so maybe, maybe I'll get luckier and maybe get an interview with one of them. That's one of the things, one of my uh, to-do things <laughs> on my to-do list. Uh, I hope I'll get the chance to get an interview with them, but if not, I, I've gathered enough information to make uh, several documentaries basically uh, from this country and also enough footage of course right it's a little bit more from the place where I am uh, I guess I'll better just show it to you and instead of turning the camera I'll just use the second camera uh, so now you're seeing what I am seeing so as you can see let me see if, yeah as you can see there on the edge of the beach there is a construction site now uh, Instead of that construction site, for the entirety of the communist period, there used to be um, a fence. A fence, quite literally, separating the populace from the sea. Why? Because several kilometers that way, by boat, is Italy. And the Hoxha dictatorship obviously couldn't um, allow even the remote possibility of people uh, fleeing the country. Pretty much like uh, Castro, Castro's Cuba, basically. So now they're, they're finally having the enough funds to... Uh, they, they've already torn apart uh, the walls that used to exist to separate the rest of the country from the beach, uh, which is something that's uh, obviously good for the locals, but not so good for my purposes because I wanted to videotape a portion of that wall. Uh, sadly, there aren't any, at least not here in Duress. Uh, some uh, young guy told me that I could find some of those further down south, but I don't have enough time to go uh, further down south. Uh, not, not on this trip anyway. So yeah, there used to be a, a wall. Now the, the wall has been torn apart. They're, they're making um, basically a glorified sidewalk so everyone could take long walks to, uh, to the beach. Uh, and yeah, the, the, this place uh, and this country as a whole, but especially this place, Duras and the capital city, Tirana, uh, they're evolving at a very very nice pace which is why it is infuriating to me when I see so many individuals who are demoralized because they shouldn't they have every reason in the world to be optimistic uh, about the future of this country uh, sure there are problems but then again there is no such thing as a perfect country I, I, I've actually had this argument <laughs> with a with a young metalhead um, in, a, in a place called Tirana Rock Cafe uh, maybe I'll show you some footage from there too. But I've had this argument because uh, he kept on insisting that, oh, come on, there are such things as uh, perfect countries. And when, pre when pressed, he couldn't actually give an example. He was like, ah, oh, well, uh, the UK is quite nice. I'm like, yeah, it's nice, but it's dangerous. It's not perfect. Because perfect countries don't, don't exist. The good news <clears throat> is that people here are open to dialogue, uh, which is much better than it used to be. 
Uh, also, one more thing, of an, an element of progress. Um, ten, ten years ago, I would usually be the only uh, foreigner around. These days, they've gotten accustomed with tourists, they've gotten accustomed with foreigners. Uh, it is no longer a problem to find someone that speaks, uh, well, English is still difficult, but uh, there are a lot of people who speak Italian, German, French. I've even found someone uh, who spoke Russian. Uh, English is still not so common, but uh, nevertheless, it's n nobody looks uh, weirdly when they hear you speaking in English or something. Uh, this used to be the case. Uh, a, almost a decade ago, when my previous information uh, was available. Right. Uh, in other news, as I said, I will be spending the rest of the week uh, here in Albania, uh, probably in the capital city. I don't know. At least in theory, the rest would be my final um, off the capital destination. But you don't know what happens in the last in the in the next several days. Uh, and at, at the end of this, at the end of this week, I'm heading back to Budapest, and then from there to another third country, and uh, then I'll I'll keep you posted as soon as uh, as soon as I'll be able to uh, make that information public. And after that, uh, when I get back to uh, Romania, as I said, I'll spend uh, two weeks editing every single day to make sure that I get to publish everything that I want to publish from Albania. And then, as you all know, uh, in May, uh, later on in May, there is the United States tour. Um, so, uh, American peeps, please do drop me a line so I can, uh, so we can establish how, how and where and if we can uh, get to see each other. Uh, right. I guess that's that would be pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah, and all those who sent me emails worried about, ah, are you okay? Are you? Uh, isn't Albania dangerous? No, it's not. Uh, Tirana would be the second safest capital city that I have visited. The first, the, the safest one still remains Yerevan. Uh, and uh, Tirana would be as safe as Kiev, which is basically very safe and uh, significantly safer than Stockholm, London or Berlin. There's no question about that. Uh, nobody really gives a damn here. Uh, and I even took long walks at uh, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., uh, even in the so-called ghettos. And with my camera, with this particular camera, uh, and trying to uh, get some footage, there isn't much to videotape, especially during night in the, in the periphery of the city. But nevertheless, um, I went there and uh, there were people on, in the streets, but nobody, ca nobody cared. I mean, the worst thing that happened was someone uh, asking me where I'm from, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that's very tolerable uh, and uh, much, much safer than, um, than the periphery of Stockholm, for instance. I mean, just saying. Uh, right. Uh, I don't know. Well, was I supposed to say something else? I really don't remember. Um, oh, yeah, I should. Uh, one particular weird, weird thing about this country is that they don't have railways. And it's not that they don't want to, but the communist dictatorship believed that uh, they would be invaded via railways. So therefore, even the railways that already existed were destroyed during the communist era. And uh, there is only one railway still functioning from here to the capital city, about 50 or 60 kilometers. Uh, but. Uh, Apparently, there's only one train a day and nobody really takes the train. That's quite unfortunate because I really wanted to take a, uh, a journey by train uh, from here to uh, the capital city. But I guess that's, uh, the train really doesn't have a future in this country because uh, with the impeccable roads that they have, and again, the, one of the best roads in Europe, you'll find them here in Albania. With, their, with the roads that they have, I don't think they really need railways at the end of the day. But yeah, uh, that's quite a that's quite a peculiar uh, by European standards not to have uh, functional railways, even if they function poorly. But you know, have some railways. Nope, Albania doesn't. Uh, right. I guess that's pretty much it for now. Uh, there are still two more uh, long format, one hour long videos scheduled for publication. One of them, I believe, is uh, this Saturday, and the other one is sometime during next week. Um, you will forgive this uh, uh, longer periods between uh, publishing new videos, but as I said, uh, I, I'm only one person and whilst there are uh, big plans uh, for the present and especially the future of this operation, uh, I'm still one person and there I can't really do uh, everything uh, at once. 
Right, so uh, with all of that being said, uh, I will leave you with uh, a short montage of, um, of some pictures. Uh, let me show you slightly um, what I have videotaped so far, so show you around the, the rest. And uh, I will see you all quite soon on the Freedom Identity. Cheers. <laughs>